Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. You are back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops and his special guest and Canadian correspondent, Mike Shoesmith. Now, here's Carl and Mike. All right, welcome back, America. Freedom Friday, Carl Gallops, and you are tuned in live to the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. So glad you're with us. Our Canadian correspondent who's been with me from the beginning, Mike Shoesmith, who's also the social uh, co- uh, director, uh, blah, blah, social networking coordinator and director for the world-famous and uh, mega-viral P.P. Simmons YouTube Ministries, which incorporates two or three Facebook pages, uh, a huge blog spot that syndicated uh, the P.P. Simmons YouTube channel. Mike, I was looking today, and I noticed that YouTube channel is going on 24 million views now, uh, 21,000 plus uh, subscribers. I mean, it's just getting huger and huger all the time. Well, it's, it's like the Freedom Friday radio show. You know, I happen to know that there are people right now listening in Egypt to us right now. Isn't that amazing? I know. Listen, you... if you're only a sporadic listener to Freedom Friday, you may be tempted to think that, well, all they do is they bash the Democrats and they don't find anything. They're just contrarians and, and haters. But listen, when we see somebody doing something outstanding, uh, we don't hesitate to point that out. And uh, so outstanding uh, Democrat of the week, I guess you could say, would be Secretary Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, she delivered a powerful and personal speech about religion at the Aid u Fitter reception, marking the end of the Muslim holiday Ramadan. Uh, the speech at times was a direct response to the attacks on U.S. diplomatic missions in the Middle East and the deaths of four diplomats at the hands of militants in Libya. Now, get this. Uh, Ms. Clinton, she says, quote, when Christians are subject to insults of their faith, and that certainly happens, she says, uh, we expect them not to resort to violence. That's right. And they don't. Uh, you know, the same for all the other religions, Hindus, Buddhists, etc. You know, we don't expect them to blow up buses, and yet, and, and, and yet they're all insulted. And, and, you know, we expect them uh, not to resort to violence. And then Clinton says, the same thing goes for Islam. And she's, I mean, this is powerful stuff, right? Because she's, she's talking to the Muslims here. Right. And then she, she says, I so strongly believe that the great religions of the world are stronger than any insults. Yeah. No, no, there, there's some powerful stuff here. Yeah, no, you're right. And, and I'm wondering what Uma Abedin thinks about all that. <laughs> yeah, and, and what, she, yeah, she closes and she says, uh, uh, you know, the, the powerful religions, they've withstood offenses for centuries. She says, restraining from violence. Yeah. So it's not a sign of weakness. So she's 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 uh, she's she's castigating them. Yeah. She's no. Saying, she... listen, is your faith really that weak? Right. That N- somebody makes a a uh, a uh, you can't even call it a B list movie. It's more like a G or an F list movie. Is, is that is your faith really so weak that you have to go around killing people right. because of that? Essentially, that's what she's saying. So well done, Secretary Clinton. Although somebody did point out to me earlier today that a broken watch is right twice a day. <laughs> At least twice a day, that's right. You know, I read your blog on this, and you were yeah. right, you're dead on. I mean, I, I mean, that, kudos for uh, to her, and kudos to you for reporting on it, because what she said was truth, what she said was powerful, and, I, you know, I scratched my head. What a, what a conundrum she is. You know, what an oxymoron she is. I yeah. just, I just, uh, I, you don't know how to figure her. I mean, sometimes she says some of the most wonderful, patriotic, uh, mm-hmm. amazing things. Most of the time, she says some of the most idiotic, leftist, uh, horrible things, but uh, this time she nailed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, she sounded very patriotic in 08 before the, uh, before the Obama regime got a hold of her. But listen, th- this, week, th- this week's uh, news out of the science community, very disturbing, really, because uh, it, it, uh, it, it deals with... Um, with a uh, with a buzz uh, over the over the supposed discovery of a new species of monkey. Yeah, I saw that on your blog as well. That's fascinating. Talk to us about it. Well, I mean, the, the word "new" is being tossed around abundantly, but but is it really new? I mean, you have to understand the debate dynamics here in order to understand why it's important to the secular, godless science community to set the narrative, yeah. and that's why they're being very successful at this, and they're sucking in a lot of people who should know better. And you know, you know, that is that nothing exists unless they discover it. Right. The, the Daily Mail is reporting a new species. Now, get this. This is the Daily Mail reporting this. 
And really, they're doing the work of the atheists here. They're saying a new species of monkey with a distinctive blue rear end has been identified in Africa. Researchers have said the species known... See how they say researchers have said? Yeah, yeah. They're just parroting what these atheists are saying. Right. I say atheists because I know the the so-called scientists scientific rag this is published in plus one and that you know you know yourself that that is a decidedly atheist rag yes it is and 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 uh, this thing is in the home of uh, they found one in the home of a, a school teacher in the congo and and the young animal resembled an owl-faced monkey it's it's a strange looking thing you can see it on our blog yeah and uh, but the color of its rear end was different to any of that, now get this, any of that of any known species, <laughs> the researchers writing in the journal Plus One. So, did you notice what the secular science rag Plus One said? The color of its rear end was different to that of any known species? Now, wait a minute. If you go and look at the pictures uh, that are on our blog of this animal, it was well known to the locals. I mean, they even kept these things as pets. <laughs> right. You know, this is not a new species at all. Right. It was just new to the uh, atheist scientist, but it's not new to the world. Right. And, you know, by the looks of this, this species has been around for a long time. And, you know, it's important to understand that secular scientists, they have a God complex, and nothing exists unless they discover it. Yeah. And unless they discover it, it can't possibly exist. Now, does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, yeah, it does, right? I mean, this really does place on full display the level of which the converse fallacy of accident is entrenched in the atheistic religious community, masquerading as caring scientific fellows. Yeah. You know, they never encountered a blue-bottom monkey before, <laughs> so naturally such an animal could not exist. Yet, when it is shown to exist, they claim to have discovered a brand new species. That's right. That's right. Brand new. Well, you know, Mike, look. Look, look, I would much rather believe in settled scientific fact than some magic man go. in the sky All like right. you believe in. Well, I mean, it, it, you, know, you, you really hit the nail on the head there. You really do understand <laughs> this, and your book really does point this out well. But the result of all this is the major Internet, like Drudge and, and them and Broadcast News, they're citing boldly declaring scientists discover yeah. new species of monkey. I know. You know, when in fact no such thing is true. I the know. monkeys were discovered by people a long, long time ago, but Drudge and Savage and others have freely helped the atheists promote the narrative. Yeah, without right. even realizing. Of course, Drudge right. is just kind of a cut-and-paste kind of thing anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. but still, you're right. I mean, they, they found it on some website, and they cut-and-pasted the headlines. Right. But, uh, but no, your analysis is brilliant, Mike. I mean, you know, they declare it new only because they've not known of it, right. but, it's, but it's obviously been here for a long time, and as you said, the, the locals, the natives, were keeping them as pets. You know, it's not so a it new with, species. Yeah, I and mean, so it is with God, right? I mean, millions of people around the world, well, this is the problem here. This is the fallacy of atheism, the converse fallacy of accident, because it's the exact same problem they have with God. Millions of people around the world have discovered the truth about God and have personal relationships with Him. They interact with him daily, and yet so many secular atheists with evolution as their creation story make bold claims that no God exists because, yeah. alas, they have never experienced him. Right. <laughs> You're exactly right. That's a, right. Brilliant, that's a brilliant analysis, Mike. And people need to realize that scientists are just people. Yeah. And just like MIT professor, now get this now, MIT professor and Pulitzer Prize winner, we have this story on the blog too, Juno Diaz, he said this week, now I just happened to be, uh, I had a, another moral failure this week and I was listening to NPR, <laughs> and I heard this interview with this uh, <laughs> Juno Diaz, he was talking about a book about, you know, why men cheat and all that, and it was a, it's a highly philosophical endeavor, and, and uh, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the uh, interview, he said something stunning, he says, uh, all the people that I run into at MIT are supposed to be the smartest people in the world. Oh, my gosh. And I have discovered, he said, that there is no correlation between intelligence and wisdom. Because oh, these wow. people are not wise. Yeah. They may be intelligent, but they are not wise. Now, what? there's a man that teaches at MIT and has a direct affiliation with Harvard. Right. And he says, these people are not wise. Now, what does the Bible say about the atheists? They may be intelligent, but they're fools. They're not wise, and they have no wisdom 
to discern that, yes, God is real. He loves them. There's a hell to shun and a heaven to embrace. And, uh, you know, people, don't buy this lie. You're not an animal. And this, this monkey, as cute as it is, has been around for a long, long time. Right. There's nothing right. new about it. And there but, is. Are you there, Mike? I'm here, brother. Okay, I heard a big bang. I thought maybe <laughs> a big bang. Isn't that funny? No, I, I, <laughs> I, I heard a, No, there was a bang in the line, at least in my headphones. I thought I'd lost you. But let me just say, you know, uh, it, and, and, and in addition to what you just said, and there is no settled science that irrefutably proves that evolution is how we got here. There is no settled science to that effect. Am I right? Not at all. In fact, uh, you're going to hear from Mr. Hoven and, and later on in, in, in the hour that, that, in fact, the science is on our side. It is on our side. Mike Shoesmith, I'm glad you're on our side. We're out of time. All right, brother. Thank you. God bless you all. We'll talk to you next week. Take care. See you next week. Folks, you are listening. Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops will be back after this brief time out. Chris Ann Hall is up next. Constitutional attorney. She's a fireball. You don't want to miss her. Plus, we've got a surprise to share with her when she comes on the air. Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops. Mallory Bardwell, your world-famous producer. You're listening live. W-E-B-Y. We'll be right back after this time out. <laughs> 